Hi everyone, today I want to talk to you about David Hilbert. David Hilbert was a tremendously influential German mathematician at the end of the 19th and early 20th centuries. He made breakthroughs in a wide range of different mathematical areas and in 1900 he published what he considered to be the 23 most significant unsolved problems in mathematics which effectively set the research agenda for the next 50 or more years, in fact, even up to the present day. Let's find out more about him. David Hilbert was born in or near Konigsberg in what was then Prussia in 1862. After leaving school in 1880, he enrolled at the University of Konigsberg, where a couple of years later, he began a lifelong friendship with another great future mathematician, Hermann Minkowski. Hilbert became a lecturer at Konigsberg and remained there until 1895, when he was appointed professor at the University of Göttingen, then the leading institution for mathematics in the world. He was surrounded by other eminent mathematicians such as Emmy Noether and Alonzo Church and many of his students rose to become eminent in their field, including Hermann Weyl, Ernest Zemlow and Hugo Steinhaus. During the early phase of his career, Hilbert reorganized number theory, crystallizing his conclusions in the classic book Zur Zalbericht, The Theory of Algebraic Number Fields, published in 1897. He then moved into geometry and performed a similar service by setting forth the first rigorous set of geometrical axioms in his Grundlagen der Geometry, Foundations of Geometry, in 1899. He became a master of mathematical organization. Among his most important discoveries was of what's now called Hilbert space. This is a space of infinite dimensions in which distance is preserved by making the sum of squares of coordinates a convergent sequence. It's of crucial importance in the mathematical formulation of quantum mechanics. Hilbert invented a simple space-filling curve now known as the Hilbert curve. A space-filling curve is a curve that passes through every point of a finite region, such as a unit square or a unit cube, of an n-dimensional space where n is greater than or equal to 2. Hilbert also proved Waring's conjecture, a hypothesis that had been put forward without proof by the English mathematician Edward Waring in 1770. It states that for every number k, there's another number s such that every natural number can be represented as the sum of s kth powers. For example, every natural number can be written as a sum of four squares, nine cubes, and so on. Waring's conjecture was first proved in full by Hilbert in 1909. At the Paris International Congress of 1900, Hilbert proposed 23 outstanding problems in mathematics to whose solutions he believed 20th century mathematicians should devote themselves. These problems have come to be known as Hilbert's problems, and a number still remain unsolved today. Hilbert's mathematical philosophy is partly revealed by a couple of remarks, one of which he made after learning that a student in his class had dropped the subject in order to become a poet. Good, he said. He didn't have enough imagination to become a mathematician. Whether he really believed the second quote is open to question. Mathematics is a game played according to certain simple rules with meaningless marks on paper. Hilbert's dream was that it would be possible to prove or disprove all mathematical questions starting with only one set of well-defined rules and assumptions. In 1931, the Austrian mathematician Kurt Gödel showed in his incompleteness theorems that this was an unattainable goal. Hilbert's health began to decline in 1925 after he developed pernicious anemia and he died in 1943. The English translation of the epitaph on his tombstone is, we must know, we will know. 
Ironically, the day before Hilbert uttered these sentences at the 1930 annual meeting of the Society of German Scientists and Physicians, Gödel had announced the first expression of his incompleteness theorems, proving against all of Hilbert's hopes that there will always be truths in mathematics that cannot be proven. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll check out some of the other videos on our channel. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again very soon to discover more maths.